welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 206. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Ro. Hello, cool people. Hey there, Ro. How are you doing? Slowly but surely, slowly but surely. Growing beards and claiming names. Alright. And also joining us today is Kyle. Ah, oh, I am so tired and exhausted today. I've been walking all around the city, Norman. What were you doing? Catching Pokemons? No, I wish. Actually, I was playing board games at the local board shop. <laughs> board <laughs> shop. The local board game shop. <laughs> so, did you get bored? And I... Oh, Norman. <laughs> we need to, he hasn't gone to his university course in puns yet, but having said that, good first attempt. I, I, I appreciate the effort. A for effort. <laughs> Well, I guess I rolled the die on that one, did I? Oh, uh, fair. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and what's even worse is I can't think of anything to come back with. I'm thinking of everything and my mind has gone blank. I'm, oh, I'm doomed. Fine, you have it. You win. Just cue the Seinfeld theme. <laughs> oh, wait, wrong theme. No, right? No. Oh, oh, boo. Kyle, do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Go straight to jail. <laughs> uh, anyway, also next on the roster is Sapphire. Can I pet Raleigh's beard now? What? <laughs> what? I want to pet his beard. Uh, I must pet his beard. Um, I like beard. She means the little woodland creatures living inside my beard. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. I want to pet your beard. Give me your beard. Well, and then I shall I... write about it. About how amazing it is, and then put it into an episode <laughs> well, of My Little Pony. It's an amazing beauty spot. Kyle, what did you mm-hmm. see? Oh, sorry. Oh, me. Sorry. I apologize. I, I was actually genuinely looking at my microphone going, is this working? <laughs> Just... <No. laughs> uh... I get you. That's been happening to me a lot lately, where I've actually been in like random chats, and I've said something, and it's just gone nowhere. <laughs> and it's like, is this on? Is this thing on? <laughs> Can I just check? <laughs> oh god, I know that feeling. But anyway, so welcome to the show. Nothing much happening this week. We we do have a lot of news, but in terms of, well, stuff. Like, what did you guys do for this week? Like, how was your week? Well, it's been weird. Mm, how weird? Like, can share weird or cannot share weird? There has been some. I feel like there's something in the air. Something's going on out there, but I have no idea because I'm locked in my apartment, just sitting here, drawing. Uh, uh. But I sense the disturbance in the force. <laughs> right, my sleep did. has been not been very well. Waking up like I got just got off a train wreck. Wait, I thought you tried to reset your sleeping stuff. I did, and I'm sleeping fine. I don't sleep during the day. I sleep during the night. But I, uh, but the last couple of days, I've been waking up feeling like a train wreck, and the dreams. The dreams feel odd. There's something odd about them. Like, I've been visiting my old friends from school. That everything was covered in ruins. And then there's this guy. <laughs> Have you been playing Fallout? No, I've been staring at a blank canvas for the past three days. <laughs> All right, then. Because playing Fallout might happen. Nah, bro. No, nah, no. Nah. Video games, the only thing I dreamed ever about was freaking, I don't know, high-fying heavy from Team Fortress. That's the only dream my video game dream I had. <laughs> All right, you then. All right, you then. And Kyle, what about you, man? Me? Oh, this week has been a very quiet one on my part. Uh, I've been working, which has been fun. I've been playing games. I've been playing The Division, so I've been going through that and uh, trying to decide whether it's uh, as good as the publicity says it is or whether it's a bit of an empty game. Uh, I've been enjoying it so far. Um, I've actually gone through most of the game already, and um, I don't know if it's going to have long activity. I'm not sure. MMOs and consoles are a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, the last big one we had, and you can debate me on this one, was Destiny. Oh, yeah, there, there was one. There was a big one. I thought that The Division was... Or sorry, I thought that The Division had a one-year plan kind of deal. I mean, I don't know too much about the, the plan side of things. I mean, I can only assess the game based on what it is right now. I mean, I hate that idea of games having a one-year you you know, a one year plan or we're going to make it bigger and better with DLC and all that sort of thing, you know, all that hoopla. I mean, it's if the game isn't that good when you've released it, you shouldn't release it. Hmm. That's that's. I mean, I hate that thing about the culture we've got these days where you release a game, but you add content later. Yeah, those kind of things kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's kind of good. 
But at the same time, if the game costs around 60 bucks and you have to pay up front and get content later, that's not fun. You wonder. I mean, it's, it's just something like, you know, there are games that do DLC really, really well. But usually those games um, that have the DLC on it that do it well have very strong games to begin with. You go, right, okay, the game is solid and this DLC we're adding on is giving us this whole extra thing that is really good and makes the uh, main game even better. But a lot of DLC is just tacked on trash. You know, it's like, you know, spend $5 and get a new gun with a nice bit of camo on it. Oh. It's like, oh, really? Oh, horse armor. I know, just, oh, sorry, uh, sorry for ranting. It's just, <laughs> it genuinely, it's one of my bugbears. It's cool, man, it's cool. And Seppi, week how do? Well, I'm on spring break now, and I just got yelled at over how I need to clean the house <laughs> after this podcast, so I'm kind of limited. <laughs> oh, Bye. no. Well, at least you got something to do. Oh, there'll be a story to share on the show. Oh, yeah, and I'm on <laughs> spring break after frying my brain throughout the past week because Tammy needs a good cool egg and stuff. <laughs> oh, I saw that video, too. It was pretty awesome. Thank you. Um, I... Oi. <laughs> Wait, did you really... <laughs> Forgive me for my brain is fried. Oh, wow. Okay, then. Okay, then. So, anyway, uh, I think I'll just jump straight into news. And as most of you know, Season 6 is just around the corner. It's like, what, next week from now? So, it's going to be happening on the 26th of March. And... Oh, yay. <laughs> most reviewers dread that day, but most fans are hype. And I'm in between. <laughs> it's not that the reviewers don't want to see season six. It's just that we're not ready, man. I know. That's why you guys got a lot of work. Like, you have to do more reviews and stuff. It depends on who's reviewing, really. Some of us aren't even caught up on season five. That's how bad it is. <laughs> uh, I got no comment on that one. Like, personally, the way the review show works... It's mostly we shoot from the hip and we go unscripted and we go for an hour or more, depending. This is why I like doing the MBS, because then I can get my thoughts out instead of making a huge video about it on my thoughts. Trying to make it entertaining and trying to focus on my audience and all these visual gags. No, <laughs> it's casual and you can just do a discussion without having to get yelled at over something like the editing was wrong <laughs> true that true that but anyway most of you guys know writers on the show come and go and we have a few favorite writers on and to start off the list of writers that are not coming back is Amy Larson someone tweeted at Amy Larson and he said that uh, Amending Fences was his last involvement with the show. What does that mean? Does it mean that he's not coming back again or he didn't get uh, recast? Or what does it mean? Like, Emil Larson is an awesome dude. He writes good episodes and some of those episodes are, well, fantastic. Uh, like, Amending Fences, those are one of them. And hearing that he might not be coming back, aish, that's not fun. Well, it just means that he might not be back for season six. I mean, he never wrote in season four either. Well, there was a huge excuse for season four. Well, if you know what happened, then you do know. Well, now that you say that, Kyle, that's very interesting. Because the only reason why he didn't wrote for season four was he was doing his book, Penny Royal Academy, available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. And him not being involved with this one, he did say that he got someone to make a movie out of that book. So, could he be doing that too? Hmm. No doubt he'll be keeping busy. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt there. But the thing is, with TV shows anyway, when it comes to script writing and whatnot, I mean, it's like, it doesn't usually tend to be like the same writers kept on unless they happen to be the ones that made the show themselves. Usually it's just, you get writers in, they do episodes, they may come back, they may not, they flip them around. You know, it's the art of freelancers. Have any of you ever heard of the show Fame? Anyone, any of you heard of Fame? Fame, um, I've heard of it, but I don't remember. Right, if, yeah, right. Fame was a, originally it was a movie from the late 70s about, um, girl going to this dance, um, 
uh, teaching school place. I can't even English right now. This is not good. You know, and learning the art of dance and whatnot. And it's about performing arts and that sort of thing. And then they did a TV show about it. And the whole uh, point of the show was the fact that it was meant to be this incredibly realistic, down-to-earth portrayal of the arts and drama and that sort of thing. And it was an absolutely brilliant show. So they did a couple of seasons and they went well. And then what happened was the people behind the show, the producers, fired all the writers and then just got new writers in who were cheaper and lowered the quality of the show oh, as wow. a result because they treat it as a business. So that's what tends to happen in a lot of shows. Hopefully that won't happen for MLP because they keep bringing the same writers back and even if they miss seasons and whatnot because um, Emmy Larson isn't in this season. He wasn't in season four. And Natasha Levenger, she's not writing for season six either, but she's missed a season as well, I think. So it, these things happen. Yeah, I mean, on also on the list is Natasha Levenger. So she wrote about four episodes and three shorts. So that makes seven uh, things she wrote in total. And her things are not bad because she wrote Pinky Apple Pie. She wrote It Ain't Easy Being Breezy. Uh, what else did she wrote? She wrote Make New Friends But Keep Discord. And her last one was Care Master. So she's pretty awesome in the writing department. But not having... Uh, what? You don't agree? I, I, nah, I personally don't really miss N- Natasha Levinger that much. I didn't really like her episodes and story writing. It's not to say that no one else will miss her. I just don't personally care. Mm, what about Larson? Larson... Eh, he's more of a fan favorite. I mean, I do like him, like, on certain days, like, Amending Fences. That episode was amazing. But, eh, I just don't care as much as the fans do. Uh, all right. To each his own. Personally, I'm just sad that Amy King Rogers is leaving because that was my favorite. Oh, yeah, AKR is awesome. But she went to Disney to work with the mouse. I know. And, and that makes me even more sad. Still, that's good. She's moved on to better pastures, meaning she, well, she made a name for herself. Everybody wants to work for the mouse. Still though, Amy, mark. why? Why? Why, Amy? Money. You know, Timmy need to go to college. Timmy need the money. Uh, but still, Ro, would you get anything to say? Yeah, I pretty much said everything I already wanted to say, so let's move on. All right, then. All right, then. It's not all doom and gloom because we have an old writer coming back, Ed Valentine. Didn't wrote that much in the past, but he's coming back. And well, how about this? Wrote a total of two, and he's coming back. And if you guys enjoy Flight to the Finish, he did that. Trees a crowd with Megan. So. If you like those episodes, this is something to look forward to. Personally, for me, I do like how right Flight to the Finish was built, but a few things here and there, you know, nitpicky. Uh, Three's a Crowd, I love it, not bad. I love Three's a Crowd, I don't care what anyone else says. Like, I know a lot of people gave that episode... That's not a word! ...for some reason, I don't know why, but I liked it. It was it was a fun episode. Probably because of how they treated Discord. So Kyle, you've seen Ed Valentine's episode, right? You did the whole season four marathon and stuff. Yes, I did. I'm. This is me now trying to remember when I crashed through season four because uh, I did that when I think it was um, when I was going to see Brony Scott last year. <laughs> so I was trying to get through in a and in a strange parallel. I was doing the same with season five and I think <laughs> It's a heartwarming con. This seems to be a recurring theme. <laughs> if you want me to watch more episodes, make me go to the cons, and I will force myself to go through them. I will just go boom, 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 boom. Uh, Flight to the finish. I'm, I did like uh, Rainbow Dash as the the, the sort of trainer, because it, it kind of played into her character quite well, you know, because she was kind of balanced out being a bit of a friend to the, you know, the, the humor crusaders, but at the same time trying to impress the Wonder Bulls, because she's obviously still wanting to try and get her hoof in the door. <laughs> Yeah, true, true. I mean, it's one of those things where, hmm, this is a good episode? Yes, this is a good episode. What about Trees of Crowd, the one with Blue Discord? Oh, crikey, this is me now, at, like, having flashbacks. Oh, I can't remember much of Trees of Crowd, I've got to be honest. Wow, okay. Yeah, I, not off the top of my head anyway. All right, all right, all right. But still, uh, I'm, I am excited to see his episode, so 
I can't wait. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Hope it's going to be good. Hope it's going to be good. So, short news day, really. I mean, I'm surprised that we haven't passed the 20 minute mark yet. Oh my. Yeah, I, I know. It's one of those short episodes, which is good because we have people talking on show. And I do know a lot of fans, especially a few in Canada, that really enjoy the show. And talking about fans from Canada, I think we got mail. Email time! Yay! I, I love emails. I, I I don't know how to segue into this because we rarely get emails. But anyway, if you guys want to send us emails, you can send it to the mbsregiment.com. And Ro, could you please read this one? Okay, okay. Dear Norman! It was good to hear the MBS show again since a week was missing. It was torture not to have it on the car last Saturday night. Something fun was missing. CRC Brony was so thankful you wished him a happy birthday. Thank you so much for doing that. It really made his day. I missed Religious last week, but I trust and hope he will be back this week and he really makes me laugh. Anytime, anytime, just doing my job. I totally agree that we need more explosions in the show and I would really like to suggest that we tell Hasbro that we need a scientist pony... Well, scientists are good, but I was thinking more of well, demolition well, explosions with Who's big monster Thomas? trucks and popcorn. <laughs> That'd be cool. But yes, this way we could have explosions and it'll be still okay for the kids to watch the show. The scientists could have a project at Big Mac Farm and we could have a popcorn. There we go. Like I said, popcorn, she's reading my mind, guys. She's reading my mind. <laughs> we could have a popcorn explosion all over the barn or turn the apples into apple chips. Apples into apple chips? Oh, okay, it's not capital letters, so not apples as a family, but apples as in fruit. Okay, for a moment there, I thought I'd turn Apple Jack into an apple chips. Like, <laughs> that kind of looks wrong, but I kind of like that, because I'm a fan of chips. Anyway, well, next, okay. uh, Kyle, 2,000 games, really. I think you need a cuddly wife and an addict to put those until the kids come along, but since I do not play video games much, I can understand your passion as much. I would, however, challenge you easily to a why we bowling game anytime. I am the champ of the house here. Yeah, well, to answer that, yes, 2,000 plus games, that is true. I have not made this up for no reason. It is true. I mean, I've just been collecting for so long. I mean, it's, um, I mean, I went, went into gaming when I was about like a 12, 13, that kind of area, but then a uh, store opened in my local town that dealt in old retro video game consoles. And before you know it, you know, when you're a kid, you're going, why, I haven't heard of this machine before. Perhaps I'll buy it and see what it's like. And before you know it, you've got a room full of them and then you just, you know, grow, 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 grow from there. I do have that many games. I got to be honest, I think if I had a cuddly wife, she'd probably be into the games as well. <laughs> I reckon, let's be honest, if I'm getting married to someone, they're taking this on. There's not a negotiation there. <laughs> If you're marrying me, you're marrying the games as well. You've got to be into them. So true. But, but I will say, I will actually take up your challenge on the Wii Bowling, because I have played that so many times at local church when I volunteered there uh, for the uh, secondary age club. I'm brilliant at getting strikes on it. So you know what? I'll take you on. I'll take you on and CRC Brony. <laughs> Bring it on. Nice. And Steffi, what do you want to say this now? Oh, I was going to say, it's like, don't we have a mad scientist pony? Yeah. Don't we have friggin' Doctor Who's, like, during Slice of Life that one time? Yeah, but there were no explosions. I don't care. I don't care. He still counts, because he was in the canon. Yeah, true, but we need explosions. There was the fireworks. That's the best you're gonna get. That's not good enough. (laughs) Is this Hightoy a scientist pony? No, no, she's human, so it doesn't count, all right. But I'm with Ro with this one. <laughs> doesn't count. <laughs> and moving on forward, one question I would like to—I would like you guys to answer. Do you guys have a pony you think you are as much alike to, and if so, which one? Hmm. Rarity. That's a good question. Oh, uh, wow, well, straight away, rarity, eh? Are you really that generous? Yeah. Do you guys not know that I design dresses? Uh. For other ponies? Flash. Well, okay, <laughs> got me there. Let, let me link you right here. This way you'll get a feel for what I do. Some people say I do better than Rarity. Yeah. Uh, Most people say I'm pretty, pretty overdramatic. Okay. Only DeviantArt would load. <laughs> oh, crap, I think my mom shut off the internet. Oh, God, no, you're still talking to us. If, you, so if good. she did, you'd not, you would not be here anymore with us. Still, though, I'd be worried if... DeviantArt is taking this long to load. Uh, could be Skype eating you on your bandwidth. But anyway, uh, Kyle, what about you, man? I'm not sure if there's any pony so much or character that I'm like I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, 
yes, you and me are clearly so much alike. Although I will say, I think I've got a bit of discord in me. I'm a, a bit when mainly when I'm playing games, I do tend to be a bit of a troll. Case in point, when I was at the board game shop earlier on, I was playing a card game called Coup, which is all about the art of lying and deceiving with the other people and, you know, trying to knock them out. And it is great because you do get to kind of troll them and lie and deceive and double bluff and do all sorts of things. And it's just like when you're doing that and you're knocking people out, you're just going... <laughs> yeah, don't do this court. I, I can see that. <laughs> all right, then. What about you, Ro? I'm not sure. I'm kind of on half with Discord because I don't like making sense. I don't make. I don't find fun in that. And with Derpy, because I just don't know what went wrong. So I guess kind of fifty percent from Discord, fifty percent from Derpy. Because yeah. I found my bearded ponies. Yay! There. <laughs> all right. Say bearded ponies. These are all my dresses that I've designed for other people. Oh wow! Oh, I remember oh, this. Oh my! I remember this set. I would look so good in that course up. <laughs> oh god, no. But anyhow, yeah, um, as for me, I don't know, um, I have multiple, I think I could go for rarity because, well, I, w- I won't say generous, but I do have a bit of generosity, uh, Fluttershy in her shyness, and, uh, well, technically I could relate myself to the main six, like, I, I, I think I have a bit of everything in there. And the funny thing is, when Lauren wrote those characters, she wrote them in the sense of each character can be relatable. So I guess for me, most of the main six, because there's a part of me I can see in them. Is that cheating? No, I mean, if I got 50, this one 50, therapy, so you're fine if you take 10% from the main six. Yeah, all right, that's fair enough. Although when you were just mentioning there about Discord and Derpy, I've just realized that those two should be shipped together. No. Because, think of it, Derpy's probably the only person that Discord couldn't actually affect, because Derpy would just be, so Derpy should find a way of somehow getting out of it. There's a comic about that. <laughs> is there? Yeah. Oh. But it's not what you think. Uh, the comic is goes like, Discord, Discorded Derpy, and instead of being all sad and whatnot, she became an angry pony and kicked the flank out of Discord. Oh my. That was something funny. I, I think it's on QD. On Derpy Day or Discord Day, I forgot. It's, all there. it's, it's there if you want to take a look-see. Finish the letter then. Hope you have a really good week and I look forward to hear the show again. Best to you all, sending a big pony hug from Canada. Your new fan, Shirley Ann. Ah, thank you, Aww. Shirley. I hope that you enjoy the show and whatnot because I personally for me I do enjoy recording the show uh, it gives me happiness when I record this I don't know why I am not good at this job <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still I do enjoy doing this for you guys like each and every one of you out there who's listening to this right now I mean we're on what uh, 27 minutes or plus recording I don't know but I do enjoy all this time even Though we don't talk that much, and even though we don't have a guest on the show, we're trying something new with the whole guest thing. Make more relaxation on our end with no guests and stuff. So, anywho, do you guys have anything to add on to that? Or shall we end it? Yeah, I think we could end it here. Alrighty then. Sorry for taking up your time, guys. No, not <laughs> Alrighty then. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at wshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at the MBS Show. You can talk to Sweetie Bot or stuff. I know she's going to retweet this thingy of an episode everywhere. You can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickling my fancy is, I don't know, um, food, probably. <laughs> I do like the foods. Uh, I need to take more pictures of food. Uh, what about you, Ro? Where can they get you, man? You can find me at my Twitters at Relicious underscore art, or on my DNR gallery, Relicious.DNR.com, or the Relicious Galleries at ReliciousGalleries.tumblr.com, where we read, blog, and retweet, repost other cool people's artwork. Awesome, awesome. Hashtag spread the creativity. <laughs> nice. What about you, Kyle? 
Well, you can find me at facebook.com for slash Kyle McCall, where I will be writing about all sorts of cool projects that I'm in right now, both the MBS show and my other show, um, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, which is, uh, we've got new episodes out every Tuesday on the Home Bronies YouTube channel. And this week we have a new episode out with some guests. You should check that out. I'm sure the guests are lovely. They're always lovely. <laughs> Did you forget who came on? I'm, I've got the running order here and I'm not actually sure if it's still the same. So that's why I'm not, I don't want to say which one it is. Once again, the perils of recording on a Saturday for a show going out on Tuesday when my show's going out on Tuesday and I don't know which one it is. This is the normal perils of my life. But there are guests on and let me tell you, they are lovely. They are smashing. They are absolutely brilliant. Yay! Generic list to describe a guest. <laughs> And I hate listening. You say generic. They're all true. I know. Uh, it's uh, true. Uh, uh, uh. I, 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 I totally agree. All of our guests are awesome and fantastic. But when you say that to almost 205 of them, it kind of gets generic. You know what I mean? Well, true. You know, you've got guests on. Of course, you're picking the absolute nicest, brilliant, most fantastical guests to have on the show. I mean, look at who we've got on right now. We've got yourself. You've got the gamer over here. You've got the bearded nerd, you know, tweeting art across the waves. And you've got Sapphire Heart Song. Come on, is that and not... And what a- do I do? <laughs> you're just incredibly awesome and powerful and we bow down I'm to you. I'm purple? Since <laughs> when was I purple? <laughs> when did I say purple? I thought he didn't say purple. <laughs> Said, uh, incredibly awesome and amazing and purple. And powerful. And like, powerful. Oh, powerful. <laughs> you purple. make it sound like it's purple, though. Well, to be fair, you look almost purple in that picture. I mean, I know it's kind of dark bluish, but, you know, for the benefit, it, it's kind of purple. I'm kind a Tammy, so meh. <laughs> meh. <laughs> Fine, <then>. All right. <laughs> I'm creepy. Hey, what about you, Seppi? Where can they get you? Well, let's see. You can find me on DeviantArt by looking up Anime Christy. You can also find my YouTube channel by looking up Anime Christy. Same thing with Twitter, but you can find me on Facebook just looking up Sapphire Heart Song, because why not? And you can also look up Sapphire Heart Song on Patreon and pay me your money and stuff, because because it's nice to have money every month and stuff, but sadly I have no Patreons and no one loves me enough. Aww, oh, don't no say that. Me. No one loves me enough to pay me money. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Didn't you get a commission stuff to get your new tablet? Well, yeah, but that's different. <laughs> the difference is my Patreon has been up for three months and nobody has paid me to do anything. Uh, maybe you need to pimp it out. Maybe you need to pimp it out. Uh, but... Yeah, pimp out. Tell us oh, where your Patreon is. That's my videos. <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyWithLive.com. Links are going to be in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Relations, or I am so delicious. I am Kyle McCall, a.k.a. The Midnight Scribe. And I'm Sapphire Hartsung. Dare to be different. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the NBS show. We'll see you guys later. See ya. See ya. Catch you. Catch you on the Bye-bye. flip side. Yay, chaos. This guy's going to love this episode. <laughs> <laughs>